Okay guys, with Orca Slicer, it's a little bit different to the others because it's not actually made by a company, it's an open source thing. Um, so there's some nice guy that sits there and does it for us. But a lot of them, uh, it's sort of in the GitHub, which is pretty much the place for open source stuff. And you'll need to go into there. And I've just done a search on Orca Slicer download. It comes up, you just go into the first one, releases. And this is the one point there, that's the beta release. Um, so if you want to go in the beta and test out the beta release, you can go in there. Alpha release is even worse than the beta. <laughs> so beta release is, it's gone through a bit of testing and it's about to be sort of released as a proper version. Alpha release is the very first sort of testing of it. So you might, if you really want to be a tester, that's the place to go but it might have quite a few errors in it, so just be aware of that. Um, and then we have, if you keep scrolling down, you will find the official release down the bottom here. Okay, so if you scroll down to the bottom of that, you'll find here is where all the releases are. And of course, you just pick which one you want. So you can have a so for the Windows ones, you've got an installer, which is an XE, so it'll you just double click on the XE and it'll install it for you. If you want the portable version, it basically puts all the files you need into a folder and you just move that folder to wherever you want and it all runs out of that folder. So you can put it on a USB stick and just run it off a USB. So it loads nothing on your computer except the folder. So it doesn't put any drivers or anything in there. Okay, I usually do the portable version, so you just double, you just click on that, and away she goes and downloads. And when it downloads, it will come up, and it'll be in a zip file. You then unzip it, and you get something like this. And you can see it's all in the folder, and I can play that folder wherever I want. And of course, you want the orca slicer.exe there, and you just basically right click on that. And then you can, um, it'll usually say pin to your start, but I've already pinned it. So it's saying unpin, but it'll pin, pin to your start button will make sure when you push on your start button here, it actually is in your start area there. Okay, so once you open it up, you get to this screen here. So from this screen here, if you want to get, you go up the top here when it's in prepare. So what I might do is just turn off support before we do anything. Our support's off, good. And I'll check in the brim. I don't want a brim on it, so I'm going to turn the brim off. But you can have a brim, it doesn't, the brim's not so much important. It's a support that you don't want in there. Okay, then you go up to the top where it's got calibration. And you click on that and you've got, once again, you've got all these tests you can do, yeah? So, the one we'll do today is temperature. So you get this screen here. Now the reason it's popping on and off all the time and I have to drag it across because I've got more more than one screen on my computer. So it's popping it off onto other screens. Okay, so the same as before, you can pick which um, filament you want and you've got a temperature range here that you can go through. Now you notice you can't do the temperature step. That's, that is set, <coughs> but you can do the range. Okay, so 190 to 230. It's interesting that Cura starts at 230 and goes up. <laughs> yeah, these guys start at 190 and go to 230. Oh, well. You know, what you might want to do is go, oh, well, I want to go higher. So you go up to 250. And then go, yep, show us. We've changed some of the presets. Yes, yes, transfer them across. Okay, and it's just going to make a taller tower for us, yeah? And you can see all the temperatures going all the way up to all the way down to 190 and 250. So there you go, that's how you do it in Cura. Okay, so when your temp tower is finished, you'll get a little tower something like this. So I've stopped it before it's finished, but you get the idea of what's going on. So just go into close up mode. So you'll see the different temperatures that it's printed at. And then you've got um, these little spot th um, spike things, which will show you how the spikes print. And then you've got the overhangs to show you how the overhangs print, but you'll be wanting to look at them this way. Yeah, you can see that this at two, the 230 overhang, 
is drooping a little bit more than some of the ones up here so I would say probably the 215 is the best overhang just underneath the top there 220 is not bad but it's not as good as 215 but you can also have a look under here where the um, circles are you can see the overhangs there and how it, it joins up the circles so that's what you want to be looking for I can't really notice that much so I use one of these <laughs> it's got a little light on it and I shine it on and I have a look through that way um, but you can pick up the big differences between what's in the um, what sort of print they are now what I'm using here this camera is the Neb new Nebula, Nebula camera I'll show you from that does all my close-ups so this is a new Nebula, cam Nebula camera that Creality's just released and what you can do is you can set the focus so you can do um, the distance focus or close up so I got it to set to close up that's what was blurry when it started when I brought it close up you could see it so this is going to be my little close up camera they cost hardly anything I think that's what, um, 50 bucks or something 50 Australian dollars something like that um, for the camera and the stand and I'm just using this as uh, plugged straight into my laptop which yeah, sits up there so I just plug straight into my laptop and I've just attached it as another camera now what I've, I've ordered another two because I like it so much I thought well shit that's a bargain for the price and I'm going to put one on my KE that's coming in the next um, couple of days the show she should be here tomorrow maybe um, and I got a Hallett Marge Pro coming that will also fit directly onto the printer and you can just monitor and, and do time lapses and all that sort of stuff um, for that so that's what I've done so this is the temp tower now what you do once the temp tower tells you what setting you want I'll just um we'll just go into the program and show you how to change it in there okay so in August slicer what you need to do is once you pick your printer um, you have your filament here that you can pick from so I usually pick the one that you're going to resemble as much as possible so it's going to be that I'll just down to as I'm changing that came up and from once you pick your, your filament come over here to this little square with a like a pen or something in it click on that and I'll come up with your um, your filament settings here so we want to scroll down to here and this is where you set your filament temperature so here it's got 215 for the first laser I'm going to do everything else at 220 I'm just going to say no I want everything else at 215 like so and you can um, change your bed um, your bed temperature there and your flow there if you really want to um, so the way you save it is come up to the little um, disc at the top here and just click on that and then name it what you want so we'll name it um, Gary's like so um, and we just use a preset project um, inside preset I think it means it wants you to only save it in the project where well, we want it saved to the user so once you've done that you can close it and you can see now it's here it's in your list you can see I've done a few others but it's in your list here and you can choose that and it will print at the relevant temperature so they're very similar most of them so especially um, Orca, Creality Print and Bamboo Slicer and Prusa Slicer will be very similar because they're all sort of derived off Prusa Slicer so um, and because it's open source um, software they use each other's code and, and that to help get a better product which is which is good about what's good about open source anyway so that's um, Orca okay guys thanks for watching I really do appreciate the support you might like one of these or one of these <laughs> videos um, that I've made in the past so feel free <laughs> okay thanks guys bye